become an all-too-familiar sight. The bodies of three Canadian soldiers are now on their way home. Corporal Thomas James Hamilton, Private John Michael Roy Kerwin, Private Justin Peter Jones, killed Saturday morning when their armored vehicle was hit by a roadside bomb west of Kandahar City. As a security measure, fewer soldiers attended the ceremony because earlier in the day, the base came under attack by rocket fire. With more on the loss and on the surprise visit of U.S. President George Bush to Afghanistan, we are joined now in Ottawa by Scott Taylor, editor and publisher of Esprit de Corps magazine. Good to talk to you. Good morning. You were on the show last, Scott, last Monday talking about the 100th Canadian soldier killed in Afghanistan, another roadside bomb now killing three soldiers. Uh, you know, wh wh what's going on here? I mean, I, we know that the helicopters are, are I, I, you know, in operation, at least some of them. Um, uh, you know, to, to, to avoid this sort of thing. Give us an update on, on where things stand right now. Well, again, we've had a batch of, I mean, soldiers killed very recently. Um, we had a three-month break where we didn't have any soldiers killed, and I think that was a bit of a sense of false optimism for us that things may be getting more secure. Um, but we weren't hearing about the wounded that we were taking and the attacks we were taking at the same time. So, I mean, it's been pretty much consistent, a constant attacks, the pinprick attacks against our soldiers. And the idea of getting us off the roads and into the air in this case, I believe, I mean, they, were, they were told there was an IED being planted. They went out to remove that IED because it's not just a threat to our soldiers, it's also a threat to the Afghan people. And, of course, the thing was detonated. So, I mean, as we change our tactics, the Taliban and the insurgents continue to change their tactics to, to strike back at us. Uh, rocket attacks on Kandahar Airfield at a time when we are dealing with uh, our casualties, is that a coincidence or was that deliberate? It could be a coincidence. It certainly could be. But it's one of those things where the attacks on the base... Um, as mentioned by your reporter, I mean, they're, they're fairly common as well. They happen all the time. They're more of propaganda value for the Taliban in Kandahar itself because, of course, uh, to date there hasn't been a single fatality caused by these rocket attacks. Um, they're more of a nuisance factor for the soldiers. Mm -hmm. But for the people inside the city, um, what they're seeing is a flash and a boom out at the base, and then word of mouth they can spread it that they've killed X number of, of you know, NATO soldiers. So the idea being that if we can't protect ourselves on our own base... How can we possibly protect the Afghan people and therefore win the hearts and minds that they would then trust us, you know, to you know, tell us where the IEDs are so that we can, in fact, begin to make it a safer place for everybody? Scott, I wanted to ask you about uh, the New York Times yesterday running a, a, uh, uh, a major report, an unpublished report, 500 pages, something from, the, uh, w from within the U.S. government that says upwards of $100 billion could have been wasted on the reconstruction of Iraq and Afghanistan, um, you know, in their efforts to rebuild. You, uh, you were in Iraq multiple times in 2003. This is the time that, that they're particularly focused on. What do you think of that? I mean, did you see a lot of wastage when you were there? Well, I think it was more that there was no plan in place to really get in and get stuck in right away. I mean, as we know, they, they disbanded all of the Iraqi police and security forces, let them go off the streets. The looting that was prevailed for months, it was just lawlessness in the, in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And then, essentially, most of the money that was spent was basically bringing Iraq back to what it was before, while it was under Saddam. I mean, the destruction caused by the initial attacks by the Americans and then the post-American invasion looting destruction, uh, which was almost complete, they then had to invest $116 billion just to build it back to what it was before. So the average Iraqi didn't see any increase in his you know, standard of living, yeah. but in fact now he's got the deterioration of the security situation. So as we saw with the shoe-throwing incident the other day, I mean, certainly five years plus into the invasion of Iraq, George Bush is still not being welcomed as a liberator by the Iraqi people. Scott Taylor, good to talk to you. Thank you.